Melrose Arts, this is Art in Action, a series of live art demonstrations by prominent local artists. Working before an audience, the artists describe their process and answer questions about their technique. They show you their approach to art in a very personal way. From the art of encaustic, reverse painting on glass, fiber art, and calligraphy, it's all here. Sponsored by Melrose Arts, a volunteer group dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose. These monthly art demos are open to the public and free of charge. Today on Art in Action, fiber artist Margot Stage shows us how to use fabric instead of paint to create a winter landscape. Margot loves the tactile quality of working with cloth and the total engagement of her hands in the process. The imagery she creates and the materials she uses reflect a deep connection to the natural world where she finds joy, solace, and glimpses of the divine. It's called fabric art, it's called fabric collage, it's called fiber art, it's called art quilts. And this is sort of how I get my inspiration. I love this piece of blue fabric. And, and I love it because not only of the color, but it's a very soft piece of cloth. So I've done a couple of pieces using that as the sky, and I thought that tonight um, it would make sense to use my last piece of that blue cloth <laughs> and um, create, create one more winter scene. Well, right, for the first step that I do, it, this is called applique, so the first step that I do is I fuse it. And um, what I'd use is Wonder Under, wonderful Wonder Under which you can iron on to the back of your fabric and then, and I can pass this around, you can feel that there's sort of a rough side. So you iron it onto the back of your fabric and then when you peel it, the paper off, the sticky stuff stays on the cloth. So I can then iron that onto this and it will stay. Part of the reason why I use Wonder Under is because it's very easy to cut into the cloth if you have um, the Wonder Under on on the back, as opposed to trying to cut into the cloth. I mean, it, it sort of stabilizes it. It makes it easier to cut into. This is another, I don't know whether you can see this, but this is another piece of cloth that I've been very intrigued by. I have no idea where this came from. People give me stuff all the time, and, you know, I have bins and bins, as probably anybody that works with cloth does. It has sort of a, a silvery, to me it looks like ice. So, oh, yeah. so what wow. I'm, what's in my mind is, is that I'm going to create a pond, you know, a frozen pond. We'll see how we do, but that's, that's sort of what's in my mind. Sometimes I work from a sketch, and sometimes I work from a photo. Like for my Waters of March series, I took a whole bunch of photos of the ice breaking up um, one March, and I took photos along the Charles River, and I took photos along a marsh um, near my home. And I worked from photos for that series. But a lot of times I just work from sort of what I remember, you know, having seen or in my head. I, I, I work from nature a lot. So I'm just going to wing this. I'm just going to cut a shape that we'll see. I'm just trying to get, you know, some edge. And actually, I think I'm going to go a little bit lower than that and use like some, uh, some other whites to create sort of a snow bank. And then we'll have this icy looking pond. But I'm gonna put this down first. Use parchment paper between your iron and your fabric because sometimes, like I have no idea how this fabric would react to direct heat. Um, I have a little bit of batting underneath, yes. Yeah, yeah some cotton batting. And sometimes I use batting, and sometimes I don't. And you know, one reason to use batting is because it gives another dimension. Once, you've, once you sew it, it gives another dimension to the piece. Now, here's a piece. This is just kind of one of the things I've kind of fallen into doing. I put the Wonder Under on this piece, but I wrinkled it so that it, it has the See, it has the wrinkles and the dimension already right into the cloth. I mean, I think this was probably a happy accident one time, and then I was like, oh, I think I like that. So, um, you know, some of this, 
I think, may be our, like our snow banks on the far side of the, of the pond. Generally, I do the background first and come forward, because I, I think it's a lot of what this work is, is the layering. Yeah, not unlike painting. I think it's helpful to usually to go off the edges because then you can um, trim back as needed. So I want to get a little bit, I don't want a straight line. So I think my idea now is to move down to the four foreground, but also um, since the, the size of the blue sky is limited, I thought maybe a tree coming up in the very close foreground, and then maybe some smaller trees out there in the background. What happens if we? Now, this is a tie, piece of a tie that I found on the road. And, and when, I, when I was you know, grabbing fabric to bring here, I didn't know I still had any of that. And there it was, and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's the tie, you know. There's a story, there's a narrative to a lot of the pieces of cloth that I use. I mean, one of the things in my, in my mind is to have, you know, some, I need something over here, some far ground. So another one of my favorite fabrics. <laughs> it's like distant tree line. Made for it. I'm interested in, in you know, sort of pursuing this idea of, of installation, which is definitely bigger work. It's sort of landscape, I mean, it's, that's the stuff that I'm sort of most familiar with. And I consider putting my work out there as sort of completing the circle, you know, that, that I'm not just making it for myself, I'm making it to then share and hopefully give something to other people. Well, Margo, thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope, I hope you learned something and you're very welcome. Thank you. Margot Stage has shown us how to create a winter landscape by appliquing pieces of fabric in a painterly fashion. By adhering and layering pieces of cloth, she develops the background, midground, and foreground. She then machine sews the pieces together. Margot explains how the fabric she uses often has a story or narrative attached, giving another dimension of meaning to her work. Be sure to check Margot's website margostage.com for further examples of refined work and to learn of upcoming shows and classes. Visit melrosearts.com for information about Melrose Arts, upcoming events, and future art in action demonstrations. Melrose Arts, dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose.